find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Want to have you. your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. But I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail bar set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Eating for the taste of the fly. Six, six. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show, episode 43. I'm Mike Sorg, at Sorgatron on the Twitter. It's coming at you from the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. A video producer here with uh, independent wrestling, doing some shows, doing some documentaries, all kinds of fun stuff, and podcasting, kind of where we started. Also with me from San Antonio, Texas, he's the uh, commentator for Inspire Pro Wrestling, part of the great NWA organization, uh, and also a recent writer on NWARingside.com, uh, Amen at Amen Two, please. How are you doing this week, sir? I'm doing fantastic, sir. Trying, and I'm excited to talk about some more indie wrestling as we do every Tuesday night. Yes, let's not pretend we're just connected here. Of course, uh, check out Wrestling Mayhem show this week. Uh, he uh, even had some great uh, thoughts on a lot of Hell in the Cell. And, I had some uh, weird things to he say. He had some weird things to say. He got some great quotes about uh, blueberries and smoothies. So please uh, check out WrestlingMayhemShow.com, <laughs> uh, the latest episode up there uh, for that information. It's a little more of a raw podcast about about the mainstream of wrestling, right? The John Cena's of the world and the big giant 20 foot cages that I would be really worried if they were on the indie circuit. Um, but in the meantime, Hey, big uh, shout out to basic sickness, basic sickness.com for the intro outro music for this show, as well as the other wrestling mayhem show uh, that we do here. Uh, you can also check out everything we're doing over at wrestling mayhem show.com, including links for iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio radio for the indie mayhem show. You can search us on there as well. Also, please drop us a line if you have any thoughts about indie wrestling, if you have any thoughts about our guests, if you're about an up-and-coming guest and you have a question for them, go to goodtimes at wrestlingmayhemshow.com or uh, the phone number at 412-206-WMS0. That's the hotline. You can leave a voicemail right there. Um, and also, uh, you can join us here every Tuesday, 11 p.m. Eastern Time at live.sorgatronmedia.com, and you can jump in the chat room and join us there. And we're also on uh, social media all over the place, at Mayhem Show on the Twitters, uh, as well as uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook, Google Plus, and our great Facebook group, where we have a lot of great discussion. So this week, uh, again, somebody uh, from up here in the Pittsburgh area, uh, he, we've seen him a lot uh, across, wow, just about all the promotions, I think, around here uh, by now. Uh, he's the former pocket rocket. He's the uh, heavy metal rocker. He is Aiden Vale on the line with us right now. How are you doing tonight, sir? Doing great, man. Just hanging out in the tub with some scented candles and a little Rod Stewart uh, bringing <laughs> the night. It's not a gimmick for you. You really are a rocker, right? Now, this is a guy, uh, he, uh, IWC, he starts coming out with drumsticks. And 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 you're, and you're uh, tell us, what is your recent tag team again? Uh, we are rock stars and in short, war. So every match we are involved in, we go to war. Awesome. Awesome. I always, and of course with uh, Jordan Lennox, your partner, a great, uh, great tag team, a coming tag team there in IWC been around for, for, for a bit now. Um, I, I have to make a confession. I, I don't know if I confess this to you in person, uh, in one of our car rides here, but, uh, I was always sad that because when you started with IWC with the coming out with the drumsticks that you never got a chance to team with Logan Shulo now signed to WWE, of course, um, when he had the mic stand. I know that would have been pretty cool, actually. I talked to him about that a couple of times because um, I didn't actually know that he could play the guitar until you know until we became better friends. And I thought like that would be actually pretty cool if we could do something. And like I actually brought my drums, and he could do the guitar, and he could sing, and we could shuck and jive, you know, something just do, pull out in some way at a show. That'd be pretty cool. I always thought. Oh, that'd be awesome. Well, I know at the time, I think you were just coming in. We're like, well, maybe Aiden can be the roadie or something to start with, right? You know, because like, he was <laughs> yeah, coming out. Cool. He, he was coming out with a mic stand and he was putting the microphone on there. He's reciting lyrics and everything, you know. Uh, uh, almost hit my camera with a mic stand a couple times. <laughs> Got real close calls there. Um, but, uh, you know, really cool to see him doing doing awesome. So, uh, Aiden, I want to uh, first let's get into before we uh, talk about some uh, specific things. We like to start off, you know, again, we're all in this because we're fans of some sort. And I know you got some 
fun stories that we've talked about in the past. But but first of all, what was the earliest memory you have that got you into pro wrestling in general? Um, my very first memory of pro wrestling would be uh, I can't remember. I think it was WrestleMania 16 or 17, maybe, where it was uh, Undertaker and Big Boss Man. Mm. Do you remember which that was? It was one, one of those. those. But I could have, I was, man, I was probably five or six, and I was flipping through the channels in my mom's bedroom, and we were hardcore and had one of those cheater boxes, so we got the pay per views for free. And I just remember going through, and I saw uh, Big Boss Man just hanging there from the cell, and I was like, what? That's crazy. <laughs> and, uh, that was my very first exposure to pro wrestling. Oh, wow. Your first exposure was a lynching? <laughs> yeah. That's... And from there, I said, I need, I need to take part in this. This is my future. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That is a really... Okay, that is probably the weirdest first experience we've ever had on the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was just the first exposure. But then, of course, I guess I just tuned in after that to watch it. But that's kind of all jumbled together. Really, mm. afterwards, my... Because I was still pretty young at that point, but um, I I guess I watched it for a little while after that, but then I stopped, and then I found out, I guess, like, whatever, however many years later, uh, that they somebody told me they changed it from WWF to WWE, and I was like, what? So I had to check that out, and then from then on is when I started watching consistently. I think I was, I feel like that was, well, I really don't know. You know so I feel like that's a couple of years later, but I was still pretty young at the time, probably like fourth or fifth grade. Awesome, awesome. I know we uh, we've had the conversation before. You, you've had uh, some run-ins with one of the superstars. I know we talk about a lot on the other uh, podcast, the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, can you can you, can you tell us that story for for our friends here? Are you talking about the big story with uh, you know the, my main man, Mister uh, JC? Yeah, the Mr. big story Tina. with JC. <laughs> well, there I was, right in the old sixth grade. <laughs> Went to school that day with my nice Michael Jordan basketball jersey and my early release form to get out and to go to the press conference for the No Way Out pay-per-view that was going to be in town. And so my mom and I go. And I wish they still did these, actually, because this was a pretty cool experience. But so for everybody who hasn't been to a uh, whatever a, a press conference, you just go and you stand and they state their piece and then they just sit at the table while everybody else is talking. And so... Uh, John Cena came out, he goes to the podium and he's, like I said, he says his piece and then I'm standing probably like maybe seven feet away from the table even. And like I said, I'm in sixth grade, so I'm still a pretty young kid. Uh, so he's on the far right and he's the U S champ at this time and he's got the belt and everything. And he's got his, uh, Pittsburgh throwback jersey on. And I'm like, Oh my God, there's John Cena. He's right there. And then I look over at him, and he's just hanging out, listening to whoever else is talking. And I'm like, I said, Cena. And he looked at me, and I, I gave him his little uh, word life hand gesture, and he just kind of gave me a wink. And I was like, oh, my God, this is the greatest day of my entire life. <laughs> and then um, after it was all over and all the guys headed to the back, you know, everybody swarmed Cena for, for an autograph. And so he got, a, he got through a couple of them, and then they had a – you know, the poster for the show that's coming up for the pay-per-view. And um, so my mom threw it up there for him to sign, and she's going through her purse real fast looking for a pen or something, and all she could find was eyeliner. So she's like, oh, this is all I have. And then John Cena, being the witty guy he is, he just said, oh, eyeliner, how very metrosexual of me. <laughs> and, of course, she got to laugh because it's John Cena. And then um, after that, I shook his hand. And neither one of us watched it for probably a week or so because it was such a, a meeting of the minds moment. It was <laughs> just pure power in that handshake. <laughs> and it was quite the run-in. Amazing. Was that when you knew you? Was that when you? Was that when you knew you had to go because you had your touch of greatness to, to be a pro that wrestler? Was it. That was it. It was curtains. It was curtains after that. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> of course, uh, yeah, uh, if I if I recall, you did train with the uh, IWC's wrestling school, the Iron City uh, Wrestling Academy. That's correct, right? Um, it was it was the unofficial IWC oh. training school that I came up with. It was with Shirley Doe, and it was named the Coalition of Competition. That's right. That's right. I'm sorry. So uh, I knew it was an IWC school, but I, I forgot it was before they did the that's reboot. Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, I'm an OG. <laughs> You're an OG. <laughs> uh, 
Um, and, and of course, the first time I got to see you, and we talked about this with Jimmy Nuts here uh, a few months ago, um, and the guys on the Wrestling Mayhem Show know I was uh, very excited about the Pocket Rockets in the RWA. Um, which of course <laughs> was you and Jimmy Nuts. Uh, you were going under a different name at the time, I believe. Um, but you know, at, at the time, you know, RWA was growing and they were developing their, what their talent was and everything. And you guys stuck out, uh, you were guys that were, you know, definitely smaller, doing some more high risk stuff. Uh, can you tell me a, a little bit, uh, how was your experience as the pocket rockets during that area era with, uh, Jimmy Nuts? Um, it was cool, man. It was my pretty much, well, it, it was my first taste, uh, as being a pro wrestler. It was, that was my first experience from seeing it from, uh, the other side of the ring, I guess, you know, from inside out. Um, and it was cool. I had fun, you know, it was, uh, I've known, I knew Jimmy a couple of years prior to that. So it was actually, you know, it was, it was fun to actually have that experience with somebody you consider a friend and to be on the same level with and to kind of cut your teeth together. And I'm still growing, you know, it's not like I'm some sort of veteran now talking like that. Um, but that was just my very first experience in it. And I, you know, I, I loved it. It was, it was awesome, basically. Awesome. Awesome. Of course, you go to IWC. We, we mentioned about you being the drummer, Aiden Fail. Uh, we are rock stars. Um, you, you've had a, you've been around for a good bit. Um, I, I, one, one big thing that happened over uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, at Retro Reunion, uh, you were involved. One of the, uh, you know, one of my favorite things in IWC was always the old tag scrambles. Um, Back in the day with guys like Ray Rowe in the Cleveland Mafia, uh, uh, Babyface Fire with Corey and, uh, and, and Shima Zion, or whatever the heck he's being called these days at TNA. Um, um, <laughs> <laughs> you guys got to harken back to that a little bit uh, be, by being a part of the, the Norm Connors Invitational Scramble. Uh, what's it like to be a part of a, a big frantic four-way like that? Oh, it was awesome, man. I've always, you know, my first experience as IWC was uh, with, Jason Glory. I think my first show ever, just being, you know, as a fan, was uh, Showdown in Newtown 3. Oh, wow. Um, and, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's it's just, just like, I, kind of how I just said before, you know, it's, it's, it's cool to be, you know, on the inside looking out and growing up, you know, and, and watching Shima and, and Glory. It was cool. To, it's, it's cool to be in the ring with either one of them, you know. It's, just, it's cool to be in the same locker room with any of them. So it's just a great experience, and anytime I, you know, I'm even considered to be in something like that, it's you know, it's an honor. Awesome, awesome. Now you're also involved with uh, Vicious Outcast Wrestling. We talked to a few people from there uh, over over these uh, few months. Uh, another uh, kind of out of Pittsburgh uh, kind of organization, and you're doing something very different there. Uh, we talked to Generation Dead in the past, who are of course involved. Uh, big. Can you, can you explain uh, what's going on uh, over there? You're doing something a little different because you're you're very much. If you guys aren't on video to see the picture, like he is. This guy is the the, the rocker. He's wearing the denim. He's got the bandana, and he was definitely doing this at VOW as well. But now it's kind of turned uh, to something different. Yeah, man. Um... Generation Dead, they kind of got to me, and you know, basically, anytime I'm, you know, in the in the, the formation, the presence of of everyone who is who is evil, uh, that's when the darkness comes out. I guess you could say that's when I'm more aggressive, and that that's my that's my outlet in that way. You know, like everywhere else, basically, and you know, I'm a pretty positive dude. I'm I'm pretty easygoing. I have a good attitude, but you know, behind every person, there's 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 just somebody. You know, there's that build up aggression, and and BOW is my outlet to get that out. I guess you could say. Awesome, awesome. Do you um so so you know are, are you working? Is it is it a different side of Aiden as as far as what you're doing in the ring? Are you is it is it more vicious? Are you trying a different style when you're out there uh, in the face paint? Um. Yeah, I would definitely say it's more vicious. You mm -hmm. know, it's. It's not as flashy. It, it's not as um, you know. It's not as eye pleasing. I guess it's just more straight to the point. I guess you could say more cutting down uh, whoever I'm in there with. You know what I mean? Hmm. Um, awesome. And I know we've talked a lot about IWC, uh, you know, in the past, but uh, VOW definitely seems like it's a different feel. Uh, what, what would you uh, say? You know, is the differences big differences between the two promotions as far as what people are going to get? Um, 
it's kind of tough to say. I would say they both they they both get it. Mm-hmm. You know, they're both. VOW is obviously um, what they've only been around for going on two or three years, I guess. I, th- I think they're having a second year anniversary here coming up. Okay, yeah. So they're going into their third show, um, and what I, you know, IWC's been around for years and years. So I can't really say that VOW is definitely not as experienced as IWC, but they definitely have a great product. They definitely have a good vision of where they want to go and how they want to grow and are planning on growing. Um, and IWC is just, you know, they've, they've been there and, you know, both places have such, they have, but both of them have such great locker rooms and, you know, they're both so different at the same time. And I feel like it's just apples and oranges in a sense. You know what I mean? Hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, one question we like to ask is, uh, you know, as we wrap up here, um, you've been, you've been at it for a few years now. Uh, what is the best and what is the worst thing about working in independent wrestling so far? Um, I'll start with the worst, I guess. The worst is it's, it's well, at least for me. And I guess in the point of my career where I am, it's not, as consistent as I would, you know, like it to be, and I feel like that kind of goes for maybe all independent wrestlers because there's no there's no guaranteed work, and I'm, I'd like to kind of compare it to like I guess maybe the territory days where there was more consistency. I guess, um, I but that's really that's really the biggest downfall. It, you know, it, it, sometimes it's tough to get everybody on the same page, and you know, every promotion, and not every promotion is obviously the same. You know, some are way more professional than others but i mean i can, i really can't complain because i love being here and you know for for the best and that's that's just kind of it it's i get a chance to do you know what what i've dreamed of doing basically to give you that you know almost generic answer i feel like but um it's just great to have an outlet and i guess being an independent wrestler you're not really constricted and i don't really know from experience considering i haven't had any contracts with any companies but <laughs> i feel like you know i am I'm, and that's that is what it is. It's it's independent, and you you know you get full control basically over base you know almost everything that you do. So I love that. I love the freedom of it. Awesome, awesome. What's the coolest experience you've had so far uh, in your work, in your travels? Uh, I was super. I was Stevie kicked by Stevie Richards. That was kind of <laughs> cool, actually. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> I was um. It was at the first Extreme Rising show. I think that's what it was called. Uh, yeah, and um, I was part of Raven's Flock, and I ran out, and uh, Stevie Richards didn't like what I had to say, so he Stevie kicked me. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. Uh, well, Aiden Vale, he's going to be there uh, this weekend, right, at a VOW, Vicious Outcast Wrestling. They're going to be at the... Uh, Ice Mine in Connellsville, PA. That's about, uh, I know I'm about downtown Pittsburgh, and I think that's about an hour drive out of town for us. Uh, it's the first annual Natural Cup. Um, do you know what you're going to be doing there at that event? Actually, I'm not going to be a part of this one. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, but uh, That's quite all right. But, you know, still come out and, you know, support the product. Awesome. Uh, so, and of course, he's also part of IWC uh, Wrestling dot com uh, in that big four way scramble. You can actually pick, get the match right now for a dollar ninety nine over SorgatronMedia dot com slash store. Look up the I, IWC Digitals for Retro Reunion, and you get the whole show for nine ninety nine. Of course, or anything else, Aiden Vale. You can pick up all of them all the way back to Super Indie uh, match wise. So, uh, thanks, Aiden Vale, for joining us. Where can people find you online? Uh, you can find me at Twitter at Aiden Vale. And Facebook backslash Aiden Vale number one. Awesome. Go check them out. And thanks a lot for joining us. We'll see you at the next IWC show. Hey, thanks for having me, man. Appreciate it. All right. And now, Eamon, we're going to go and uh, check out some more indie wrestling. Yes, we are, Sorg. Uh, it's, it's time to talk some indie wrestling. Uh, I, I thought it'd be good to bring up a, a, a thing that we uh, talked about a couple episodes ago of uh, a, a indie wrestling situation that, that had been happening, and, and that was with uh, one former uh, Ring of Honor champion, Michael Elgin. Uh, uh, for those that don't know, from when we uh, first talked about the story, uh, Michael Elgin uh, dropped the Ring of Honor world title to Jay Briscoe at their, uh, well, uh, not, not Glory by Honor, um, Death Before the Sun, I think. I, I may be wrong. Uh, they, 
you got a lot of names. Uh, their, their event in Canada. Uh, uh, the reason cited being because of he had issues with his work visa, which caused you know him to not be able to wrestle in America, um, and and kind of basically be detained at the border, which would prevent him from you know wrestling on TV tapings and stuff like that. And he had to, you know, I think drop a couple titles for a couple different companies as well. So it was a very you know terrible situation, um, and. Basically, there was a lot of controversy that came of it. Uh, Michael Elgin being very vocal on Twitter about the issues and about how Ring of Honor had been uh, advertising him for his return for his show and, and how he wasn't going to be at the show. And and uh, basically, uh, he left the company. Um, uh, there's been a couple developments with that. Uh, he released a shoot interview. Well, uh, I should say High Spots. Uh, released a shoot interview with Michael Elgin just weeks after the whole incident to kind of explain it um, and and go into depth with it. And the preview is on the High Spots uh, YouTube channel. You can go check it out. A uh, very uh, interesting video. Uh, mainly uh, one of the main interesting points is that uh, for most of it, Michael Elgin's uh, having this interview uh, and he's talking with a, with a dip in his mouth, which is interesting choice. Um, uh, and he's, he's basically talking about how, uh, you know, legal action was kind of threatened on the part of Ring of Honor uh, for, for some things. And, and obviously it was just a preview for the interview. So there's not, you know, you, you have to buy the DVD to get the full story. Um, but basically uh, Ring of Honor uh, had a couple events in Lakeland, Florida uh, this past weekend. Uh, and they had been announcing along with their card that Michael Elgin was going to be making his return at that event. Uh, and Michael Elgin once again spoke out and said, "No, I'm, I'm not part of this." To the point where he even on a on a Facebook uh, post uh, released uh, word for word the email that Ring of Honor sent him, uh, which uh, basically went into what they wanted him to do at the show, where he they wanted him to put over Jay Briscoe and then and apologize to the fans for the visa issues and 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 basically try to make good of this PR or they would threaten legal action. Uh, and uh, Michael Elgin kind of was very public about that aspect as well. Um, and But Ring of Honor continued to uh, advertise him for the show, um, which was very odd until obviously not knowing what was going to happen until the show started. Uh, and, and Michael Elgin did appear uh, and he, it was part of their TV stuff. Uh, and apologies, there are some spoilers for TV. Uh, so if you don't want to listen, fast forward, I would say if it on this, on this podcast. But um, he basically was scheduled for some matches. I believe there's a match with Cedric Alexander he's supposed to wrestle. He comes out in like a white beater and like jeans, like very much sort of like Dean Ambrose s style of attire and uh, basically lays down and then refuses to wrestle, um, which is interesting. And the, 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 it seems as if Ring of Honor is going a very uh, uh, work-shoot route, which is weird, in my opinion. And then, and to be entirely honest, not my favorite thing in pro wrestling. I'm not a, not a gigantic fan of the whole work-shoot uh, kind of angles. Uh, and in fact, Ring of Honor is kind of doing like a work shoot sort of thing with Tommaso Ciampa as well, where he's like uh, been attacking people and, and trying to sneak into the building and stuff like that. It's very, um, it's very weird. I, I, I don't know if this is the path Ring of Honor should take. Um, and the question is how much of this, it, it really puts in the question how much of it uh, the thing is, is actually true. Maybe Michael Elgin and is having to work in this situation because of legal action that's being threatened against him. Uh, and then Ring of Honor is just attempting to sort of write it off by doing this sort of work shoot angle. Um, it's, it's very weird. And, and I don't know if it's the right way to go, hmm. to be honest. Um, but yeah, very weird stuff going on in that whole situation. And I believe... Uh, Michael Elgin even wrestled uh, for an indie event uh, one of these past weekends. I heard from one of the reports of someone that was there that he basically kind of shit on shit on Ring of Honor and like uh, uh, put put over the company that he was wrestling for. Um, and yeah, I, I I don't know exactly what's happening, Dorg. I, I, I don't. Know. <laughs> I'm so confused. Um, I, if it's a work shoot, God, guys, I I don't know if that really works for anybody. 
Uh, especially mm-hmm. to the extent that they're going with this one. He's posting and Especially emails. in, like, Ring of Honor. Like, Ring of yeah. Honor's audience. Like, I don't... I mean, is, is it ultra-serving that 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 it, that online wrestling fan at that point and making them eat it up? Hell, we're talking about it, I guess. Um, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, I think for both of us, we're like, well, we kind of like Ring of Honor and we kind of like Mel- Mike Elgin. So can't we all just get along? And it's like, well... <laughs> Oh, maybe it is a work shoot and they're not really separating and that'll be awesome because they're not really separating and that's where we can go with that. Uh but you know, do we but really have to do it? It's also kind of like this the history way. of like Ring of Honor's issues and stuff like that. It's it's you know, some of the discuss- the stuff we discussed like when we first reported on it, like it's it's very odd from coming from Ring of Honor, I think specifically, just because they've had had issues in the past with people kind of being upset with the direction of, of the company ever since uh ever, ever since uh sinclair joined so uh and i i refute that because i think uh i think sinclair has been a lifeboat for them mm-hmm. um, well, they're, I, they're a great sh- they're a great show they're a, they're the most watchable ongoing show they've been mm-hmm. since since they've been on television right um, I definitely think it's it's great for Ring of Honor, the company as a whole, since having them. I think we, when I say like issues with Sinclair, it's, it, it seems as if the issues are more with talent and and Sinclair, and and with the the there's been some disputes. I think in that department mainly. Um, but as far as far as the actual company goes, I mean Sinclair's been um, amazingly helpful. I think with Ring of Honor, in, yeah, in making yeah. them bigger. I think um, when you get to that point. Uh, because name me any of the top three companies that has never had a dispute with their talent over a contract. This, yeah. this is what happens if somebody looks like a dick. Um, TNA, WWE, it doesn't even matter, right? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I think you know, not, not just to be all like dog and ring on here too, because I think the uh, uh, that's very that's very true, and I think the weird part about this is how public it's becoming. Yeah. Uh, especially on the part of Michael Elgin, like basically being like, "Hey, here's word for word the letter they sent me of what they want me to do with the show." Yeah, like that's kind of I don't I don't know about if that's considered if that is the point where it crosses from a line of being professional to maybe being not that professional. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. He's making weird decisions here, um, and yeah, and and if he's doing that. It, the problem is when you, when you go that far, whether you're justified or not, now you look at, unfortunately, you kind of, I think, black eye yourself towards future employers. Exactly. You know? Well, if he does that with them, what is he going to do if we don't see eye to eye if I book him, you know, mm-hmm. as, as another wrestling promotion? Um, and again, I'm not familiar with that process at all. Uh, but, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of trust and understanding. I think it goes into that because it's, it's. I, I think most bookings, as we, as as the level of Michael Elkin goes, is a kind of a handshake email agreement. You know, yeah. uh, uh, you know, nobody's. There's no contracts here, guys, other than uh, Ring of Honor and up. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, so I, I think he, I, I, I view it as I think he needs to watch out there, uh, but. I don't know. In the, in the long run, I kind of hope it's a work shoot just so he's not so relegated. Just, yeah. I really hope either that or he's got a WWE contract waiting in the wings. So he's saying F it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, I really hope he knows something we know. And as far as that goes, and obviously he does about something. Um, right. So uh, really odd. I don't know. And again, I haven't listened to the shoot interview, so maybe that would, you know, I haven't listened to the full stream interview. And he's not the like first that. one. And 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 in every situation like this, like the Kenny King situation, Kenny King kind of looks like the dick in this. Yeah. You know, because he left, if I recall correctly, he left and it was still kind of promised some dates and maybe officially under the weird contract that they have. And I've heard things mm-hmm. about uh, Ring of Honor's contracts that are very curious. Yeah, uh, uh, Davey Richards is another one that was very like outspoken about how he did not like the way the company was going, mm-hmm. and they very much like never like I think they never really gave him a proper send off. They basically fired him, and and Eddie Edwards still got to finish up some dates and that. And, yeah, and I think there's always going to be a little bit of a butting of heads because there's a company that's been indie wrestling and has done things the indie wrestling way, but bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. I don't know why I'm doing this motion, <laughs> but they're butting heads with how Sinclair is a corporate entity. And they're like, well, if you don't play ball like this, then this happens. And, yeah. and, and that 
It comes down this to is... it just being when they were owned by Sinclair, or even when they did the stuff, I would assume with HC Met and stuff like that, like it's a different animal. I, I One of the biggest arguments that the, those like angry wrestlers have sort of been making is that the difference between Ring of Honor now and Ring of Honor back when it was owned by Gabe Sapolsky. But the thing is, Gabe Sapolsky, or uh, not owned by Gabe, run by Gabe Sapolsky, I should say, uh, since it was owned by Gary Sapolsky. But, um, but the thing is, that's Gabe Sapolsky, when it was run by Gabe Sapolsky, it was still indie wrestling. It, it, it didn't have to answer to other people. And it didn't have to, you know. Yeah. It, it worked on a certain level. Mm-hmm. So I think that's the main difference. And and like I said, hopefully, if more happens with this story, I don't know what's happening uh, upcoming for Ring of Honor uh, with Michael Elgin. I know there's a show in San Antonio in a couple weeks uh, for Ring of Honor. I, I'm looking to go to that. I, I wonder what may happen there. I, I, I don't know exactly, but it, it's, it's interesting stuff. Definitely, definitely interesting stuff. Certainly. Uh, one to watch, uh, but I hope it all works out. I hope everything works out for Mike Elliott. He's a great guy. Uh, I know we both dig watching. So, mm-hmm. awesome. yeah, definitely. Good, good. Uh, well, uh, with that, hey, we got events coming up. Of course, I mentioned Vicious Outcast Wrestling mm-hmm. this uh, Sunday at the Ice Mine special start time, 4 o'clock, if you're in the area. I, I love that venue name, I got to say. The Ice Mine? I love the Ice Mine. I feel like it's, I, I feel like we're, wrestling in like uh like glacier territory like i don't i don't know like, I, feel like, <laughs> I i feel like it's it may be because i'm watching a lot of old like nitros and i'm on like the 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 nitro where the yeti appears out of the oh, block of ice no. and that, and oh like, no <laughs> i feel like I, I feel like it's because i'm on that kick. oh it gets so weird i saw one where the zodiac came out and i'm like really brutus really brutai yeah. You know, it's really oh, just Bruce every like every gimmick has been just he dresses the same, but he has face pain or he has this the booty man. It's, it's it's a weird tangent that maybe we should be having on the main show, but it's it's a this is a weird era in WCW where you had the weird stuff with Hogan and 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 the the Dungeon of Doom and all that, but at the same time you had a lot of like Japanese wrestlers wrestling like and and there's some really cool wrestling happening. Like this is right before like Star K ninety five where it was all like. WCW versus Japan. Oh like, yeah, I, I saw I saw the ads for that on the nitros I was watching. Because um, nitros are the thing that I put on when I can't sleep, and just mm-hmm. put it on the nightstand on 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 my uh, tablet. Uh, it's been tremendous. Anyways, anyways, uh, via, <laughs> Outcast Wrestling, uh, November second. Of course, we have digital downloads at sorgatronmediacom slash store. I know they're selling DVDs at the shows. I don't think they're mm-hmm. selling them online. Uh, they just have a link to us. That's right. That's right. Uh, so you can go check that, including uh, September Sin that had Sabu. Great interview with Sabu on uh, on uh, uh, Talk is Jericho uh, podcast this uh, past week, I believe. Uh, go check that out. Uh, but they're having the Natural Cup, including some uh, great great guys. Robbie E. from TNA is going to be there. They're actually teasing there's going to be somebody from uh, the Big Feds uh, the next several shows. Uh, so this is going to be November's with Robbie E., of course, uh, with Sabu being last month's, uh, they're teasing guys that have been from TNA, from w, former WWE, uh, ECW guys. Uh, so go check that out. And they do have their schedule up actually already from the uh, 2015 calendar. Uh, so go check that out. Um, and then I think the other ones are uh, kind of more along your lines. Oh, Smash Wrestling. Man, I really want to yep. check these guys out. I love the presentation they have online, at least. Oh, I actually just watched the, the today their... Uh back in i believe it was like june or something they had like a free like a uh, uh uh mp4 that you could buy for one of their shows it's a really good show um they're holding their tv tapings uh, this weekend on the second uh, this sunday uh in st Catharines, ontario canada i uh, go support uh, smash wrestling a lot of good stuff on this card uh, matt cross who's the current smash champion uh defense against player uno of the super smash brothers uh, there's women's wrestling with Cherry Bomb taking on Candice LeRae, uh, Courtney Rush against Vanessa Craven, uh, Johnny Gargano takes on Pepper Parks. Uh, should be some really good stuff. Uh, uh, there's, like I said, Smash Wrestling and then Sorg mentioned it as well, like doing some really good stuff wrestling wise, but also uh, production wise. Yeah, certainly they got a big video, video screen. Really good. 
Looks like they're doing some fun stuff with this video. Looks pretty decent. I'm seeing a lot of familiar faces. Is that Jake Clemens? I see. That uh, Jake Clemens does rap for, oh, for Jake rap Clemens. And include, I believe, I don't know if he's doing it now, but I know Jimmy Cordero is actually rap for them for a little while. Nice. So, uh, so yeah, there's there's a huge huge of people. I mean, Chris Heroes, you know, wrestling for them. Uh, uh, people like ACH, Michael Elgin, who we mentioned before, um, uh, tons of people. Uh, so Smash Wrestling's doing some really cool stuff. They just finished their uh, Canusa Classic with uh, uh, the women's wrestlers of America versus the women's wrestlers of Canada, and that seems like it was a major success. So uh, definitely go check them out. They're one of those companies that's kind of under the radar. You may not know about them. You may you may know about them, uh, but you absolutely should because they, they seem to be producing some really cool stuff. So uh, you can follow them at smash-wrestling.com. And like I said, uh, their event in Ontario is uh, on uh, Sunday, November 2nd. So go check them out there. Uh, I also want to talk about two events that are happening this weekend in Texas. Uh, one I will be going to, one I sadly won't because they're on the same day. Uh, the first I want to talk about is a company that I have been to before, though, uh, and that's Metroplex Wrestling that is out of the Dallas, Texas area, uh, specifically Bedford, Texas. Uh, really cool company. Uh, they, they produce uh, some really interesting wrestling. They actually run out of a gym, out of all places, like an actual like gym. It's kind of an interesting place where they have to they they have to move all like the gym equipment and stuff like that to fit like a ring, um, but it, it has like a cool like underground sort of feel to it. Like it, it only seats like maybe like a hundred people, but those hundred people are very into everything and and they're sort of rabid kind of fans. So it was really cool stuff that, that uh, they're doing. Uh, some of the matches uh, on this card: uh, MPX champion Unholy Gregory Chains takes on friend of the wrestling, uh, friend of the indie mayhem show, I should say, uh, Thomas Shire for the championship. And uh, Yoshi Tatsu is making his debut for the company. Uh, Yoshi Tatsu slash uh, Yamamoto. I don't know exactly. He's been going by both, I guess, on the indies now. I don't know if there's a certain uh, thing like WWE copyright, whatever. Uh, but he'll be competing on that show. His match isn't announced yet, but he will be there. Uh, also, women's wrestling with Paige Turner taking on front of the show, Delilah Doom. Uh, and then there's some really cool stuff. There's some cool talent uh, throughout the Dallas, Texas area that works for uh, for MPX. And then there's some really cool guys there. So go support them. Uh, you can go to uh, facebook.com slash MPX Wrestling uh, to go check them out and support them. And like I said, this, that is this Saturday in Bedford, Texas. So definitely go check them out. If you're not near Bedford, but are more towards the Austin, uh, Texas area, specifically Temple, Texas, uh, go check out our friends from the NWA at NWA 360. We had a uh, killer McKenzie on not too long ago to talk about NWA 360 and his work there. Uh, they're holding their breakdown event, uh, a big event that will help benefit the McLean children's uh, hospital uh, uh, in the area. So it's for a good cause as well. Uh, that's Saturday, November 1st. Uh, go check them out. Good lineup, really good lineup. Uh, the NWA North American Heavyweight Championship will be on the line when uh, Tim Storm defends against Byron Wilcott. Uh, Scott Summers also puts his NWA 360 uh, Heavyweight title on the line against Carson. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff. Killer McKenzie, like we mentioned before, uh, will be on the event as well. Uh, and there's some cool stuff. So definitely, definitely go support uh, the guys at NWA 360 in Belton, Texas. Uh, that, like I said, that is this weekend, Saturday, November 1st. So, yeah, awesome. that's some of the indie events that are happening this weekend. Obviously, there's stuff happening all over the United States, all over Canada, Europe, you know, everywhere. So, yep. Now, you- hey, can we? Um, I, I know it's not on the list, but uh, mm-hmm. I, I kind of tagged this because I wanted, I keep, I've been hearing about this. Obviously, I know uh, Matt Ross was not able to go to IWC uh, last, the last weekend uh, because of this, because his involvement in this. But mm-hmm. and I don't know. I think you said you don't know much about this either. Lucha Underground is actually premiering. Uh, I think Wednesday night here this week, as of this yeah, taping. I, yeah, I know they've been doing a couple like TV taping stuff like that. Um, I, I I'm interested in Lucha Underground. It's kind of, from what I can tell, it's if you remember back to sort of the days of like Lucha Libre USA. Yeah. It's sort of more of a. I obviously since it's Lucha Underground, uh, it's sort of a more like different feel to it. Like it's it's more hard, sort of a indie style, like hardcore sort of style, as opposed to like mainstream as you as Lucha Libre USA kind of was. Um, yeah, there's interesting stuff there. I know Matt Stryker's involved in that a little bit. Uh, there's- yeah, there's a uh, uh, there's a video here from uh, Big Zeke Ezekiel Jackson, uh, Matt Cross, like we we mentioned, John Morrison's involved with it. So it's a it's a pretty tremendous 
a, a mix of talent. Definitely. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, I presume going to be I, mixed I hear in. great things about it. I actually don't know a lot of the, you know, the logistics behind it. But yeah, I, I, I always hear about Lucha Underground constantly. So they so must be doing it. I mean, it's on, that's the case, they must be doing something right. It's on the El Rey Network. Uh, of course, I guess they've probably had a bunch of tapings, right? Uh, is yeah. what I'm hearing about. Um, so, well, I'm going to invite Serafini to this because she was suggested. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what is the L Ray? I haven't had the cable in so long, and maybe you don't either in high in, in college here. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, like I don't even know. I'm hoping they're going to have it somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> so that I can yeah, get to yeah. it, or or, I hope so. I'm, I'm not sure or am I just going to discover it like 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 you all good hardcore wrestling fans do? I don't know, uh, but <laughs> it, like I want to check this out. What is the L Ray Network? Where can I find this? Um, I, I don't know. Yeah, but well, we'll have to do some digging and and, and some searching. Yeah, yeah I, I, I have no clue about that either, but. Very, um, uh, you know, there, we we talked in the past about WWE uh, at, at the time pushing like Batista and guys like Rey Mysterio. Uh, what you have with the uh, uh, um... oh, Ricky Reyes is in this. I remember him. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, a, he's an IWC guy. Oh, geez, he's a great guy. I'm glad to see he's, he's getting some awesome work with something on TV like this. Um, it sounds it looks like this is exactly the kind of thing where he I think he would shine. You know, mm-hmm. uh, Ricky Ray is always loved. He's one. He is kind of like like well, the first IWC show I went to. The main event ended up being him and Low Key, and and then of course LB lets me know that those two were the Rottweilers and, and Ring of Honor and everything. Uh, Except for like homicide and stuff like yeah, that. So, yeah, very hard hitting, but also technical style um, that I think like would never fly. Uh, obviously, Ring of Honor great, never fly in WWE. Um, but this, I think he could have some fun with it here for sure. Um, mm-hmm. But that's cool. That's cool. And they're showing shots of uh, uh, John Morrison. I don't know what what they're. I forget what they're calling him because I know he can't use the John Morrison name. Last I knew. So yeah. Um, but but anyways, as I was talking about like you know, guys like that and Del Rio because they're really trying to super serve that um that that is Hispanic Indian audience market. here and other markets and everything. So and I'm presuming El Rey looks like it's it's kind of a Hispanic kind of based. Wow, that's some weird stuff. Um. Zombie, fan, zombie moves actually they're showing dawn of the dead return of the living dead so i don't know i'm honestly not even sure so what this no, is, i've never heard about it, it. Yeah, that's a, yeah but i i definitely like i said i keep hearing stuff about them so i i there i would hope that it gets to a big enough thing to where you know it's something that we have to talk about you know because it's so you know so prominent but yeah Definitely want to make a point to find out more about. So at that point, uh, I think we had a good talk here. Thanks, Aiden Vale, for joining us yes, here definitely. this evening. And of course, uh, Eamon, he's at Eamon2, please, on the Twitters. And also check out InspireProWrestling.com? InspirePro.com. Yep, InspireProWrestling.com. You got, you got it. Right. And follow him on all the social medias. Uh, check out, as we talked about, Vicious Outcast Wrestling and IWCWrestling.com. Uh, the, we're going to see uh, Aiden Vale and several of his personas <laughs> uh great talking with him at aiden vale on the twitters um and uh of course you can check out more from us we're over at wrestling mayhem show.com we got plenty of shows and they all have their own itunes and stitcher feeds right now uh updating links on those uh as we speak started over on sorgatron media.com a little bit uh but you can find any of us stuff just look up wrestling mayhem show or sorgatron media on on stitcher or spreaker uh you're gonna find a lot of stuff and itunes of course uh including the five wrestling podcasts that we do across across the week um of course the, but the big ones you do wrestling mayhem show and this indie mayhem show we start at 9 p.m eastern time uh 8 p.m central at live.sorgatronmedia.com 11 p.m for this indie mayhem show and uh of course you can drop us a line at good times at wrestling mayhem show.com or that phone number of 412-206-WMS0 uh, if you have any comments about indie wrestling, uh, there's a show you think we should check out or anything like that, uh, please let us know. We want to open up the conversation about indie wrestling on this show. 
Uh, so, and a big thanks to Basic Sickness, of course, for the intro and outro, basicsickness.com. Please check out our Patreon for the Wrestling Mayhem Show. It helps out all these shows at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. And of course, you can also support us through pro wrestling tees.com slash WMS. Support us, support other podcasts, support other indie wrestlers. A lot of people we've talked about are featured on there with t shirts, and that helps them out greatly if you go support them that way. Um, so until next week, uh, make sure you're enjoying and supporting. Indie wrestling out. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Eat up for the taste of the poor. Sick, sick, sick. You know how I act now. If you got a problem, come and see if I'm a back down. Wow. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Hi, everyone. Do you like video games? Do you like reading about video games? Do you like listening to podcasts about video games? Why don't you check out insertcointobegin.com? New articles going up daily, and you can check out our podcast, Boss Battle, on sorgatronmedia.com. <laughs>